Right. Good morning. Wow, that was bad. Good morning. Okay, I'll take that. that, that that's a win. Okay, so today we're going to look at uh, 15.3, continuing the same theme of double integration. But this time we're going to look at double integrals over general regions, no longer just rectangles. All right, so quick recap. Last time we looked at what happens when we integrate some function over a, a rectangle where R for X would go from A to B and Y would go from C to D. And what we found out was that we could integrate these things in any order we wanted. And we could switch whenever we wanted. As long as we make sure we match up the integration limits with the variables. Y goes from C to D, X goes from A to B. So we can go in x first or y first, it doesn't really matter. All right, so today we're going to look at what happens. We're going to integrate over some region, we'll call that d now. We'll reserve r for rectangle and d for something else. where D is not a rectangle. And we're going to find out that the convenience we got from rectangle with the switching integration order is going to be a little bit diminished. And we'll find out how, how we can handle that kind of situation. All right, let's start with this example. Let's find the volume of a solid under the function f of x, y is equal to x, y squared. Over the region D, and I'll write down the region description here. Remember, you've seen this notation before. All the points x and y such that x runs between 0 and radical 2 and y runs between x squared and 2. All right, just by looking at the bounds here, we know right away we're no longer dealing with a rectangle because we have a variable in one of the bounds. Let's sketch this out and see what we're dealing with. X goes between 0 and radical 2. That's pretty easy to see. Radical 2 is right here. So x is going to just be between these two numbers, 0 and radical 2. y is bounded on the top by 2. So here's y is equal to 2. And bounded below by y is equal to x squared, which is a parabola that we know. And therefore, the region that we're talking about is this 
kind of a quarter moon kind of shape here. And as usual, we imagine that we have a surface right above it, described by y, x times y squared. So some kind of surface right above it. And we want to find the volume of that thing that's below that surface, but right above this region right here. OK? All right, so when you do the integration for the volume, the most important thing here is the variable with the constant bounds has to be done last. That means it has to be the outside integral. Let me just start a new page here. Okay, so x has constant bounds. Therefore, it has to be on the outermost. So the outermost integration has limits 0 to radical 2. And that's x. And you always have to integrate it the very over the variable with non-constant bounds first. So we've got to integrate y first, and y goes from x squared to 2. And the surface that we're integrating has a height x, y squared. dy, right? y has non-constant bounds and dx. As x has constant bounds, it has to, go, has to go last. Again, the outer integral must have constant bounds. The inside one can have non-constant ones, that's fine, but the outside one has to always take constant bounds. Okay, once you got this set up, the rest of this is straightforward. We simply do the integration like we did last time. First one is with respect to y, so x is treated as a constant. So we get x times y cubed over 3, and y is going to go between x squared and 2. And once again, remember, it's really helpful if you write down y is equal to something, y is equal to something, instead of just x squared and 2. That way you won't get confused as to what you're substituting in for. Okay, so the rest of this is just very simple integration work. Um, so let's see, we get 8x over 3 minus this will be x to the 6 times another one, x to the 7 over 3, right? Again, the rest of this is very simple stuff. Integrating that, we get 4x squared over 3 minus x to the 8 over 24, 0, radical 2. And here, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to find out that this ends up being just 2. Okay? Make sense? Questions? All right. Now, very important thing to remember is that we can't just switch the integration like we did with the, with the um, rectangle. We can switch the order, but we have to do a little bit more work. So this is not equal to 
x to 2, 0 to radical 2, xy squared dx dy. Uh, we can't do that. For one thing is we can't let the outside integral have non-constant bounds. That just doesn't work because the outcome is not going to be a number. We expect a number out. So we can't do this anymore. But we could still switch the order. by redefining D, the region D that we're dealing with. It's the same region, but we're going to describe it, I guess define is not the right word, by redescribing, I guess. Yeah, that's a better word. By redescribing the region D. All right, so let's check out how we can do that. This is what we're given. This kind of region is called a type one region. And type 1 has x bounded by constants. Let's bring back our picture again. So that's what we started with. We can redescribe this in a different way. Same two curves right here. So what I could do here is to instead describe y bounded by a constant and x bounded by two curves. So we can say the left boundary of this region here is x is equal to 0. Right? And the right boundary of this region can be described as x is equal to radical y. We're still talking about the same region right here. So instead of talking about a region bounded above and below by two functions of x, I can talk about the same region that's bounded on the right and left by two functions of y. Right? Everybody see how I got this equation here? Yes, y is equal to x squared is the same as x is equal to radical y, right? So now we can say the region D is x comma y, all points x and y, such that y is now bounded by constants, 0 to 2, and x is bounding the left and right, left bounded by 0, and right is bounded by radical y. So another way to think about this is we talk about, well, see this is a left bound, right, top, and bottom. 
A type one has left and right bounded by constants. A type two, what we got here, this is uh, bottom, top, left, right. Just like when you're finding the area by integration, you could integrate with respect to x or integrate with respect to y. You've done that before when you found areas of these things. But here we got what's called a type two. Type two region. Okay, so we can still switch the integration but we have to do a little bit more work to switch the integration. And let's just do a quick verifying to see that we get the same thing. Okay, finding the volume this time using the type two region here. Remember the outer integration takes on the constant bounds, zero to two. The inner integration can have anything, in this case, zero to radical y. The surface bounding above that region d is still x, y squared. And now we're going to do x first and then y last, right? y has constant bounds, so y is going to occur last. So this is 0 to 2, x squared over 2, y squared, x is from 0 to radical y, dy. <coughs> so we get 0 to 2, x squared with x being radical y, this will be a x, y to the first, and here's y squared, so y to the third times one half. And this ends up being one over eight, y to the fourth, zero, two. That's a sixteen over two over eight is two. So same result as we expect. It's the same volume, the same solid, right? But comparing the work, in this particular case, type two, seems a little bit easier, right? Just a little bit. We got two, zero, bottom bound, so it seems a little bit easier, whereas type one, it wasn't difficult, but we had to do a little bit more work to, we got to do subtracting and all that good stuff. So switching the order is still a very important thing, because it could make the in many examples, in many problems, the difference could be very, very large. In this one, there's not a big difference, but we'll see in a later example, perhaps the difference can be pretty dramatic. Any question on this example? Good, okay, let's move on to the next one. Let's find the double integral over d, y, d, a. By the way, d, a is just a tiny little area element, differential element, dx, dy, or dy, dx. That's what d, a stands for. And d, well, I'm describing words here. d is bounded by y is equal to x minus 2, and x is equal to y squared. Make a sketch of d here, and then find a way to describe it, or maybe find two ways to describe it. 
Let's do a sketch first. Y is X minus 2. This is a line with an intercept that Y equal to negative 2 right here with a slope of 1. So we know this line is going to intersect the X axis at 2. So this guy here is Y is equal to X minus 2. What about x is equal to y squared? What shape is that? Parabola, which way does it open? To the right, right? Yeah, right. To the positive x, yeah. So this way. All right, so the region D we're talking about is right here. Now looking at this region here, what do you think would be an easier way to describe that as a type 1 or as a type 2? What do you think? Type 2, what, what's wrong with type 1? Yeah, type 1 we got a problem here because Type 1, you need a top curve and bottom curve. Um, over here to the right, top curve and bottom curve is pretty clear. But over here on the left region, notice that it's the same curve, top and bottom. So you're going to have to describe this as plus and minus. Y is equal to plus and minus radical x. So type 1 has a little bit of complication. We could do type 1 if you really want to, but type 2 seems to be a more convenient one to start. Type 2 is easier to formulate. Type 1 is, I'll write down what I just said, it's harder because um, top and bottom are the same curve. At the left, end of the region. Right? Type 2 says we bound y using constants. And then we describe the region as bounded on the right by x as a function of y, and then left x as a function of another y. So right away we see that um, y is equal to x minus 2 is equivalent to x is equal to y plus 2. Okay, so let's find out the constant bounds for y because we, we're going to go with a type 2 here. We need to know what that point is, what that number is, and what that number is. Remember how to find that? How to find the, these two numbers where they intersect for y? Remember how to do that? Who remembers? You had your hand up? No? You want to take a stab at it? What do you think? Yeah. We said the equation 
we want to find out where, where, the, where the two curves share that point, right? So we take the equation and make them equal to each other. Absolutely right. So we take this one. We take x is equal to y plus 2. Set it equal to x is equal to y squared. When they intersect, they, they share the same point. So the two equations must be the same. So this means that y squared is equal to y plus 2. So y squared minus y minus 2 is equal to 0. Very simple quadratic. Negative plus. So y is equal to negative 1, and y is equal to 2, right? OK, so now we know this region is going to run from minus 1 to positive 2. Everybody OK with that? Yep, OK. OK, so now the, the region D, as the type 2, we let y run from minus 1 to 2. What about x? What are the bounds for x? What's the lower bound for x? Is that the left or the right? Left, yeah. So left is the parabola, right? So it would be um, y squared. And then the right, the upper bound is the, the curve on the right. And that's a straight line, which is you don't want to use x minus 2 because you want x as a function of y. So you have to use x is equal to y plus 2. Remember, this is the left, this is the right. A more positive x is on the right. A less positive x is on the left. Just like y, a more positive y is up, a less positive y is down. OK, then we just finish the integration, minus 1 to 2 y squared to y plus 2. And we're integrating y, right? The function, the height is y. And then the differential element, dA, we're going to have to do y last. So x is going to happen first, y last. OK? Integrate inside out. The first round of integration says x is a variable. So that y is a constant. A constant integrated gives you a constant times the variable. Now we evaluate that variable at y squared and y plus 2. Once again, I strongly recommend you write down x is equal to blah, x is equal to blah, so you know you're plugging in the things for the right variable. OK, so what do, we, what do we get here? We get y times y plus 2 minus y squared dy. And the rest of this is very simple, so we can go very quick with that. In fact, you know how to do that. I'm just going to skip the uh, steps there. This turns out to be 9 over 4. OK? Questions? 
You could do type one if you want to, but type one is going to be more more difficult. If we do a type one, we're going to have to chop this in half and integrate from zero to whatever this intersection is, top minus the bottom, and then from there to whatever that is, top minus the bottom. So a type one will have two double integrals to do. And each one may not be that difficult, but there will be two of those to do. And obviously, it's a little bit more work than a type two. So the, the moral of the story is that you're going to sketch out a region here. Take a look at it, a good look at it, and come, try to come up with the best description. Type one, type two, sometimes it doesn't matter like the first example. Sometimes it kind of matters. It all depends on the, the region. All right, let's look at this next example here. Here again, we're going to have a freedom of using type 1 or type 2. And we'll, we'll consider both of these. Find the volume of the solid under x, f of x is equal to x, y. Above the triangle with vertices um, 0, 0, 3, 0, and Zero, 0, okay, vertices, 0, 0, right here, 3, 0, um, right here, and 0, 1, right here. All right, so here's our triangle. That's our region D. And we got a surface right above it. X times Y is the height. So some kind of surface right above that. Then we're looking for the, this kind of a slab of something, the volume of that object. OK? All right. Let's see. What do we want? We got, let's do both type 1 and type 2. In fact, let me give you three minutes to come up with type 1 or type 2. Uh, okay, so people to my, this side, this side of the room, you guys do type 1. This side of the room, you guys do type 2. Okay, you got three minutes. Uh, people in the middle, type 3. No type. Whatever you want to do, okay? I want to type, what did I say, type 1? Yeah, type 1 out of you guys, type 2 here, whatever you want to do.
Okay, I want a type one. Somebody over here, who's got a type one? Don't be shy, you got it. Yes. And y goes from zero to one minus one third x. Do we agree with that? Yes? Right. So excellent. So what we did here, we bounded x by constants. Very good. Now we need a description for the top. The bottom one is of course zero, that's simple. The top is a straight line with a y-intercept of one and a slope of one over three, negative one over three. So very good. So there's our type one description. Type two? Yeah, what you got? Good. Say it again. Three Y? Do we agree with that? Okay, let's check this out. We need a description for the right and the left. Right, left is x is equal to zero. Now the right here, you can, you can go from this equation, right? So if we take that equation at the top, y is equal to 1 minus 1 over 3x. This is 1 over 3x is equal to 1 minus y, right? So x is equal to 3 minus 3y. All right? So, yep, that's very close, but we needed a little bit more to that. 3 minus 3y. Any question about either of these ones? Good. Okay, who integrated either of these? No one did, really? What'd you get? What's that? Three over eight. Anyone else integrated either of these? Well, let's, let's integrate one of them. Okay, so let's take one. Uh, type one, two, one, two, one. I, I don't know, let's do two. He did one, let's do two, see if we get the same thing. I think he did one. That was the one side, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's do a two. Um, type two, we're going to have to do y last, zero to one. Do x first. x goes from zero to three minus three y. The height of that surface is x, y. Then we're integrating, integrating x first and then y last. Okay, zero, one. First round is with respect to x. y is a constant. So we get one half x squared y. And we're evaluating x at zero and x at three minus three y. y has to wait. Right, so we get one half, three minus three y quantity squared times y zero. That's great, dy. So I guess if you you know if you formulate a region in two ways, the easy thing to do is to choose whichever type that has more zeros in the bound. Zero is a very nice number when you integrate stuff. 
So if type two, if one of them has all non-zeros, then maybe, maybe you go with the other type, like in this case here. Okay, let's keep going. One half, squaring that we get nine minus six y plus three y squared, another y here. Um, no, that's 18, right? Is it 18? 9 minus 18y plus 9. Oh my, what? Ah. Is that right? Yes? Okay, good. All right. Um, let's take that one half out of the way. Oh, and, and then toss that y into here. 9y minus 18y squared plus 9y cubed dy one half 9 over 2y squared minus, that's a 3, so 6y cubed plus 9 over 4y to the fourth, 0 and 1. I hope I did that right. Looks good, yeah. Okay, and then, oh, I gotta do all this stuff. Um, I think it's three over eight. Yeah, that's good enough. I, I'm sure he got it right. Okay, you get the idea here, right? Type one and type two. You can do either one of these. Most of the time, the, the choice is not that important, um, but occasionally, it can make a big difference. There's even, there's a, I think one problem on the homework where one of them is impossible to do, just simply not doable, where, but if you switch to another type, it turns out to be very, very easy to do. Okay, one last thing to cover here. The last thing to cover here is the average value. You saw this formula before, the average value of y is equal to f of x on the interval x going from a to b is one over b minus a integral a to b f of x dx. Right? You've seen this before. So what this, remember what this does geometrically, so here's F. You got some kind of area. What this does is it finds a constant Y value constant y value such that these two regions will have the same area. In other words, we, we've calculated the area of this thing and replaced that with a rectangle with the same base but a different height. And that height is the average value of the function y between a and b. And we can use exactly the same idea here with what we just did. It 
if z is f of x, y, the average of f of x, y over the region d is this time instead of 1 over b minus a, this is a length. When you extend the dimension, the length will turn into area. So we we'll divide by the area of D. And then we do a double integral over D, f of x, y, dA. Geometrically, it's exactly the same thing, except instead of talking about area, we're talking about the volume. We replace the volume. We find the volume of, of um, the solid under the surface over D. Replace that with a flat rectangular, well, with a flat top, such that they have the same volume, exactly the same extension of that. And then that flat top height is the average value of that function z. Okay, very quickly, let's calculate the average value of that problem we just did. Let's find the average of f of x, y equal to x, y over the triangle in the last example. Okay, in the last example, we had this region here. And because we're dealing with a triangle here, we can actually calculate the area without doing any integration. But in general, you would do an integration to find the area. Here, we, we know it's a triangle, so it's very simple. One half base height. So that's uh, three over two. And from the last example, we calculated that the volume under the surface above the triangle was 3 over 8. So the average is going to be 1 over the area of the triangle times 3 over 8. The volume the 1 over the area. And this turns out to be 1 over 4. So the, the surface has some kind of height, but on the average, the height would be 1 over 4. So if you replace that region with the flat top at 1 over 4, they would have exactly the same volume. Okay, that's it. Have a good weekend. See you Monday.